Okay, so, Venom 2. I refuse to call it by its actual name, Venom Let There Be Carnage, because that name is terrible, and it takes a lot less time to say Venom 2. Anyway, <laughs> so this movie, I really wasn't sure um, what to expect going into it, because the first Venom movie, to be honest, wasn't all that great. You know, certainly it, it, it was fun to watch, at the very least, but man, was that movie completely devoid of anything that could be considered a plot or character development. Man, it, it was not a good movie. Uh, certainly fun to watch, but not good. And um, unfortunately, you know, this second movie, Venom 2, is not that much better. It, it's basically just like the, the, the first movie again, you know, the, the, there's barely a, a plot whatsoever, you know. The, the movie does the absolute bare minimum to, that it can to have what can be considered a plot or story. You know, like, you, you can pretty much basically know what's going to happen in the movie uh, just from watching the trailers. Like, there's almost nothing that you, do, that you see in the trailers that isn't in the movie. So, given, you know, with that in mind, it, I don't think it's necessary for me to go over the entire plot of the movie, I, I'm just going to cover, um, you know, the stuff that we, we don't see in the trailers, which, again, it, it is very little, especially since the runtime for this movie is much shorter than the first Venom movie. So, um, you know, basically, you know, we know what the setup is, you know, Cletus Cassidy, you know, he's going to become Carnage and whatnot, you know. Yeah, okay, so so at the start of the movie, we, we actually see... Um, a younger Cletus Cassidy, um, in 1996, um, at, um, this, this, um, at the St. Estes Home for Unwanted Children, um, uh, and, um, he's, he, he, he's basically, I, I don't know how to describe it, he, he's not really sharing a cell with, with, um, another person, um, mm. Excuse me, but they're basically, you know, like like right next to each other. Uh, this woman, his name is uh, Francis Barrison, I think it is, um, and she's basically, um, excuse me, oh, she's basically um, Cletus's uh, love interest uh, in this movie. Um, and uh, for those of you who don't know, um, this is um, she is um, actually a mutant uh, from the comics named Screech, which you know. When I first saw her in the trailers for this movie, I, I thought she was going to be uh, Scream because she was demonstrating uh, screaming powers. Um, so I, I thought that that was going to be an indication that she was going to become Scream and thus get the Scream symbiote. But no, she's actually um, a, a different character entirely named Shriek, which, you know, when, when I first heard her name in, in the movie, you know, referred to by that name, I thought, you know, that was just Sony being Sony and getting the name of the character wrong. But no, as it turns out, you know, there actually is a character named Screech. And, um, you know, that's who this character in this movie is. So, um, basically, um, so Screech is, is getting uh, sent off to uh, another uh, institute. And, uh, you know... Like I said, uh, she and Cletus Cassidy are love interests, so, you know, they don't want to be separated from each other. And, uh, of course, she uses her screaming powers to try to escape as she's being taken away uh, from the facility. And um, one of the officers um, escorting her off the premises, uh, Patrick Mulligan, um, he shoots her to try to get her to stop. And uh, he thinks he, he's killed her, uh, but she, she actually survived and just lost her eye and, and you know, is subsequently, you know, taken to the Ravencroft uh, uh, Institute. So, um, then we, we jump to present day, and the movie basically plays out, you know, the same way we see in the trailers. You know, um, Eddie Brock gets an interview with Cletus Cassidy. He finds a clue uh, in uh, Cletus's cell that um, leads to him, well, Venom, really, um, to figuring out... Um, where the bodies of Cletus's victims are, and this causes, you know, basically it gets Cletus convicted, and he gets the death penalty, 
Um, they, they, they lift it just so they could execute him, you know, because the death penalty uh, doesn't exist, or, or rather it is normally not used uh, in California, which is apparently where uh, Ravencroft is, um, I think. But uh, anyway, um, so, um, you know, uh, so before, um, uh, th there's actually... Uh, a, a plot um, involving um, Venom and Eddie uh, having a friction, so to speak. You know, Venom wants to eat people, um, but um, Eddie's been keeping him fed with, with chocolate and chickens because apparently, you know, that's, you know, they can same they contain the same things, the same materials as humans that that Venom needs to live. Uh, but you know, Venom's not satisfied with just eating chocolate all the time, so he wants to eat people. Um, but, you know, Eddie's not allowing him to do that. So, you know, this leads to a fight between the two, which eventually causes them to get separated from one another, you know. So, um, we, we basically have a side plot in this movie where, you know, for an amount of time, um, Venom is separated from Eddie Brock. And, um, you know, um, um, but uh, this separation actually happens after... Um, Eddie goes to, to see Cletus, uh, just before his execution, and, um, uh, <laughs> I forgot what was said exactly, um, but basically, you know, Cletus starts talking down to him, you know, berating him and whatnot, and eventually he says something that, um, that causes Venom to get really pissed off, and, and, and basically forces Eddie to, uh, you know, go to, you know, like, grab onto his cell and, and, and try to, attack Cletus, um, as he's, uh, you know, talking down at him, and, uh, Cletus bites Eddie, or, 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 or was it the other way around? I, I, I don't know. For, something happens where, 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 where Cletus gets an open wound on his hand or something, and, and a piece of venom gets into his body through that wound, and that's how, um, Cletus gets the carnage symbiote, as we saw in the trailer. And so, you know, Cl you know, Cletus's execution happens, but, you know, it's prevented by the carnage symbiote that, that's building up within him. You know, it prevents the execution and, of course, allows him to not only break out of the, you know, the chamber where he's being executed, but also um, from the prison. And, um, you know, it's admittedly a cool scene, you know. I'm not going to lie, I actually did like the scene where, where uh, Cletus as carnage... Uh, breaks out of prison, you know, fighting all the prison cards and causing all kinds of destruction and whatnot. But at the same time, it also really demonstrates just how much uh, a PG-13 carnage really doesn't work. You know, like, he's such a watered-down version of this character, you know, that, that it ultimately, despite being a cool scene, is actually really disappointing. You know what I mean? Like, this needed to be an R-rated movie. And as much as I like this scene, it, it really demonstrates just how much uh, Carnage is watered down in this movie by the film not being rated R. You know, so, you know, because um, uh, Eddie was the last person to see uh, Cassidy uh, before he broke out, um, you know, Patrick Mulligan, the officer that I mentioned before, um, he questions Eddie, you know, about, you know, what did he tell you, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually his girlfriend uh, comes to see him, uh, and uh, he has to tell her that um, he lost the Venom symbiote, um, which means that um, he has no means of, of uh, fighting against uh, Cletus and thus stopping him. But uh, eventually they do reunite, and they team up and, and fight Carnage, and eventually defeat him. Uh, not before, of course, um, Carnage uh, uh, finding out where um, his girlfriend is and, and uh, breaking her out of uh, her uh, prison cell. So, you know, there's a, a whole big fight scene at the church and, um, you know, Carnage kidnaps kidnaps uh, Eddie Brock's uh, ex-girlfriend um, to hold her hostage and also uh, captures um, the police officer Patrick Mulligan, who, you know, he thought he killed Shriek, but, but he didn't, and, and uh, now uh, 
you know, Sheik is basically trying to get revenge on him and almost kills him. But we see at the end of the movie that um, he actually uh, isn't dead. And not only that, but a piece of the Carnage symbiote actually got on him, which means that um, he's going to become the villain Toxin in the next movie. Um, and other than that, um, Venom basically eats the Carnage symbiote, which, you know, I'm not sure how symbiotes eating other symbiotes works, but um, whatever. And uh, then, of course, uh, Venom bites off um, Cletus Cassidy's head. And uh, yeah, after that, um, after the end of the movie, um, we get a scene, uh, the, the mid credit scene. And this is on this, you know, this is the biggest spoiler of the movie. You know, like, like I, I said before that this movie doesn't really have a, a, a plot so much, like, like, I really felt like there was so little happening in this movie, despite the fact that it was always moving, and that's mostly due to how short its runtime is. So, so really, there's not much to spoil about this movie, because again, most of what you see in the movie is in the trailer. Not that the trailer really spoiled anything about the movie, uh, so to speak. Um, it kept the more interesting bits of it uh, uh, out of the trailers. Uh, so, you know, like I said, the trailer didn't really spoil anything, but at the same time, if you've seen the trailer, you've seen most of the movie. Anyway, the biggest spoiler of the movie is the mid credit scene, where Venom is talking to Eddie about how um, supposedly uh, the symbiotes have been around for billions of years um, and share a hive mind across the multiverse. And um, as Venom is talking to Eddie Brock about this, um, we see a bright flash of light outside of their hotel uh, window, and uh, basically, um, Venom is in the MCU now. You know, so you know, basically, after that bright flash of light, he 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 freaks out, wondering what the hell is going on. You know, and and sees a news report on the TV of J. Jonah Jameson revealing Peter Parker's identity as Spider-Man. Um, so that basically is is telling us that that Eddie Brock. Uh, S S Sony's uh, Spider-Man universe uh, Venom is now inside the MCU, which I don't know if that means that we're going to see um, Venom in Spider-Man No Way Home. Very possible. Um, certainly, see, it, it, since we have this scene now, it definitely would make sense t to see uh, Venom uh, in Spider-Man No Way Home. Um, but at the same time, I also think that they might want to, uh, spend a, a little bit more time building up to that encounter, you know, like, like, cause there's already a lot going on in Spider-Man No Way Home, you know, given how it's a multi-universal movie already. So now you're throwing Venom into the mix, um, and you have to watch <laughs> this completely unrelated movie, um, in order to understand how exactly it is that Eddie Brock got into the MCU in the first place. So, um, yeah, I don't know, excuse me, what's going on with, um, this, uh, <laughs> with, uh, it's a lot to take in, uh, basically. Um, like I said, it could go either way. Venom might be in Spider-Man No Way Home. He might not, um, I'm not really expecting him to show up, but yeah, at this point, I'm just repeating myself. The last thing to, uh, to note here is that um, Venom appears to recognize um, Spider-Man when he sees him on, on the news report on TV. So given how he mentioned that the symbiotes share a hive mind across the multiverse, it's entirely possible that this Venom had a connection to the Venom from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 3, which is how he's able to recognize Spider-Man despite having never met him in his own universe. So, um, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see how things play out from here, um, even if Venom doesn't show up in No Way Home. Um, sooner or later, they are going to eventually cross over and, and meet up for sure. Like, it would be extremely disappointing for them not to do that. And, um, another thing to consider is that, um, see, there, there was, so there was some concerns that, that, um, I saw raised 
about this in, in a review that that I uh, watched uh, for this movie, which is that um, basically um, this Venom's origin story um, is not related to Spider Man, and every other version of the character has had his origin tied to Spider Man, which means that basically you know. Even if Venom in the MCU um, is better than Venom as he's been done by Sony now up to this point, um, it's still a version of the character whose origin is not tied um, to Spider-Man. So um, I think it would actually be better if, um, you know, Venom from Spider Sony's Spider-Man universe meeting uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man from the MCU, uh, as a means of the two characters being introduced to each other, and then we get a proper MCU Venom, um, you know, from the MCU itself, um, and and then, you know, not only will we get uh, Spider-Man with the symbiote suit in the MCU, but also MCU Venom uh, with uh, his origin being tied to Spider-Man. And, uh, so yeah, that, that's basically what I hope happens, and, um, and, and, and also, um, oh god, what was I gonna say, um, god damn it, I, I was about to say something, and, and, and I, I completely lost my train of thought, but yeah, anyway, um, I'm pretty sure, because Sony is going to want to continue, um, their, their own Spider-Man universe that um, Venom from Sony Spider-Man universe is going to return sometime after um, Spider-Man No Way Home, um, which is, again, why I hope that um, eventually we do get an MCU Venom that has um, a connection to uh, Spider-Man uh, in the MCU. And also, it would also... Uh, having... Sony's Venom meet MCU Spider-Man would also eliminate the problem of them needing to um, be introduced to each other um, should uh, we get a, a proper MCU Venom as well. You know, you know, Spider-Man gets the symbiote suits, you know, they, they separate, um, the symbiote gets attached to MCU Eddie Brock. And, uh, you know, they already know each other because they've met before due to meeting uh, Sony's uh, Spider-Man Universe Venom, so, uh, yeah, that, that would definitely be a, a great benefit to, uh, uh, you know, Sony's Venom and MCU Spider-Man meeting up with one another, um, and, uh, ultimately, I think what this going, is going to come down to is, um, how profitable, um, Sony's Spider-Man universe is for Sony. You know, if their movies continue to make a lot of money for them, then Sony, uh, Venom is going to go back into Sony's Spider-Man universe. Um, and, uh, you know, and that's where he'll remain, I guess, with maybe the occasional crossover. You know, if Sony's Spider-Man universe fails and, um, they end up not continuing to make money off of these movies, then they're probably going to keep uh, Sony's uh, Venom in the MCU instead, in which case we're probably not going to get a MCU Venom with his origins tied to Spider-Man, which is going to be very disappointing. But, you know, only time will tell with what's going to happen with uh, Spider-Man and Venom in the MCU. So, yeah. I probably spent more time talking about that more than anything else uh, in this movie, you know, which just goes to show, again, just how utterly devoid of, of any sort of plot th this movie is, you know. You know, <laughs> the, 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 the mid credit scene is more interesting than anything else that happens in this movie, to be honest. You know, that that's not to say that there's nothing, like absolutely nothing to like about the movie, because it, it does have, you know... Like, the humor is pretty much just as funny as it was in the first movie, but there's a lot less of it um, than in the first movie. And ultimately, I think this movie is a little worse than the first one, which, again, was already not good. Um, 
precisely because of the fact that there's less humor, less fun, you know, less action. It's just, it's a more story-focused movie, but not to the movie's benefit, I don't feel. Uh, again, the runtime and the rating really hurt this movie a lot. Uh, the movie needed to be longer, and it needed to be rated R so we wouldn't get a heavily watered-down version of Carnage. You know, he, he just doesn't work as a PG-13 villain, in my opinion. So, uh, yeah, that that's basically, you know, what I have to say about Venom 2. Um, I'm pretty sure that's all I had to say about it anyway. Um, I know this one's a little bit shorter than, than, you know, what you guys are used to from when I have these open spoiler discussions. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to be it for, um, uh, for me for today. Um, the, the new episode of What, uh, what If comes out today, and uh, yeah, I, I'm definitely looking forward to that a lot more than I was this movie. Um, I, I can assure you now that, th that this episode of What If is going to be much better than, than Venom 2, so uh, yeah. Excuse me. No matter what happens, I'm definitely looking forward to talking about that. So, uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, hope you all ha are doing well. And uh, I'll see you next time I go live, next time I post a video, whatever. Uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.